What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Man City match day poster. Now I made this match day poster for the Wolves game this weekend. You know, it can be adapted to, um, yeah, what shall I say, any football game because there's not really any Wolves players in it. It's just Man City. So hopefully uh, you guys are looking forward to this. You know, like I know you always enjoy the match day posters because, you know, you can use them on your own Instagrams. So hopefully you'll be able to watch me do this simple template. You'll be able to take your own you know images and stuff and basically do the same thing because it's pretty cool really simple and uh yeah quite fun without further ado let's get straight into the video So guys, first things first, you're going to need to download your texture pack. Now this is pretty standard with my videos, as you know, so go and download it. Link is in the description. And once you have it, you'll have all of these images. So I got these just on Google Images. I have a link, uh, well not a link, but there's a link down below to a video where I find my images if you want to know how to find good quality images. So this is what I've got so far. I've got this one, and then I've got this one, and this one. Now I found this one really funny because if you zoom in, Look at his face. Like that is just <laughs> that is just hilarious. And I think he he pulled that face before he scored. So pretty good face to pull. Uh, but yeah, I've picked these images because they work nicely. They they look cool, and that's about it really. So let's get straight into actually designing. So what you're gonna need to do is make your document. So what we're gonna do is go to new document, and then we're gonna go to 2160 by 2700. Uh, 300 resolution if you want to print it. If not, just go 72 so it'll save space on your computer. Don't worry about that too much. And yeah, we can just click create. So let's get on with that. Now you've got your, your background. So we're going to go back to our textures and we're going to get this image of Man City Stadium uh, and drag and drop it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop this in. Now I have applied a camera or filter effect to this. Now all it does is make it a little bit brighter and makes the grass a little bit greener. Nothing much to be honest. And I'm going to name this uh, Stadium. So now that's named Stadium, we can move on to the next bit. So what we're going to do is get a rectangular tool. Uh, we're going to select white and we're just going to go into the corner here and drag it right down into the middle. If I can find the middle. Okay, I can't find the middle right now. Let's do that for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to new guide and I'm gonna go horizontal, uh, vertical and then go 50% and then there you go, that's my middle. So hopefully that makes more sense to you guys. So make sure it's directly in the middle, otherwise it won't look as good. So we've got it in the middle. Um, now all we need to do is just make sure it goes off the page, like so. Drag it across, there we go. So now it's covering half of it. Now what do we need to do now? We need to reduce this opacity to about 80% so that we can see some of the stadium come through. Maybe 80 for 85 will be good. So about 85, that's good. Now you can see half the stadium come through. This is nice. So this is where the text is going to be on the left. So it's a little bit easier for you to read because obviously it's on a white background. So we're going to leave that there. Now, the next thing I'm going to add is the background images. So we can turn that one off. We can drag these two in. So I'm going to drag this first one in first and I'm going to just place it right in the middle. So somewhere about here looks good. You don't want to make it cover everything. Somewhere around there is nice. So we've got all that done. And now what I'm going to do is just convert this to a smart object and then we're going to lighten up his eyes. So if I go to our curves layer, boost this really high like that, uh, invert the mass. So command I or control I um, and then we're going to zoom in to his eyes and then we're going to get a hard brush it's quite small make sure your opacity is at 100 percent and we're just going to paint in where his eyes are just so we can brighten up his eyeballs now you've probably seen me do this in other videos so if you have you can obviously skip this bit but if you haven't it's definitely something you should learn because it makes it look so much better um, and then we're going to do a saturation reduce saturation to zero invert the mask and we're going to drag this one on top and there we go so his eyes are now white now I'm going to reduce this curve a little bit just because it's a bit too bright for me and we're losing a bit of the texture. So we've got that. Now also we can go in here and do his teeth a little bit. There's not much of his teeth showing but there's a little, there's enough to um, enough to go off. So let's just do that. That's a bit white now. There we go. So now if we zoom out you can see that his teeth are there. There we go. We've got his eyes that are whiter and that looks great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same with the front image. So we're going to drag and drop this one in. And do the same thing again so what we're gonna need to do is position him down here in the center of the design and drag and drop these two above him so control well command alt or control alt and you can drag them up or duplicate them command j so now we've got that we can just refresh these masks so command back or control back and now we're going to go into his eyes here because this one there's a lot more of his eye and teeth so it'll look a lot better so we're going to go in here and just paint back in his eyes like that. I'm going to go and paint over his teeth. Now, as you can see, I'll drag this mask over the top. There you go. It looks great. 
So that looks really good. Now I'm gonna just get this tough in the middle, and not in the middle on the edge. Now, if you wanna bring back some of the color in his eyeballs, you can. Uh, so just paint back the uh, saturation, but I don't really think his eyes are actually that colored in this, so it probably won't make too much of a difference. But already that makes it look a lot better. So the focus is there and he's just looking at the frame actually, so it looks a lot better. So we've got that done. We've got our two layer adjustments done. We're gonna need to add some crosses in the bottom left and bottom right. This is gonna be pretty simple. I've got them all here for you. So there's crosses here and crosses down here, but you can't see because they're white. So we can drag and drop this whole folder and drop it in and then go Command T and then we're just gonna position it probably around there. I would say that that's pretty good. So about here down the center, uh, there you go. So that's nice. Now these are just simple, you know, assets that just you know, add an extra bit to the design, they're nothing important. They're just little bits that can fill up the page a little bit if you're struggling. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go behind here, create a new layer below this running Gabriel Jesus. And we're just gonna get a soft brush, reduce our opacity to 20%, and then we're gonna make sure we've got black selected, and we're gonna add a, a simple shadow for him. Usually you can add a drop shadow in your adjustment bits, but I like doing it better this way, just because I think you get more control of where the shadow goes, and basically it just makes it look a little bit stronger and a little bit more you know, realistic, because when you add drop shadows with you know the adjustment, it doesn't look great. It just looks a bit, well, it just looks a bit like an amateur's done it pretty much. So doing it this way, will give you a much better effect. So as you can see, you just keep clicking away, add your shadow in. Obviously in the bits that are darker, go darker. In the bits that are lighter, go lighter. Go down here, so that's gonna be good. And once we add the camera or filter at the end, this will all look a lot, bit, lot better because it'll be stronger and uh, it'll make more sense. So like this. Now, obviously, if you do it too dark to begin with, we can always reduce the opacity uh, of the actual layer itself. So I wouldn't really worry about that too much. There we go, simple shadow. Now he'll just stand out from the background a lot more um, and just look a lot cleaner very much. There we go. So if I go out here and then turn the layer on and off, a lot better. And we'll just reduce the opacity of this to about 80%. So it's simple. Now we've done that, guys, we can, uh, you don't need to add a shadow for this one because the background image, it, it would sort of just ruin the colors. So you don't need to worry about that too much. But the next thing we're gonna do now is add in uh, some text. So I've got the text folder. Now you're gonna to need to probably install some of these fonts. Just simple text. I don't think there are any like important fonts in here that are like you have to pay for. So the if I zoom in, the Wolves is Montserrat, City is Montserrat as well. And then I think the bottom bit's Montserrat as well. So they're all Montserrat and then this Versus, which is more of like a scribbly textured effect, um, is Morsi. So I will try and find these links and leave them in the description below so you will be able to apply these fonts. But obviously if you wanna use different ones, then use different ones. They're, you know, it's up for debate. I just use this one because I want to use some different fonts that I don't usually use. So that's why I used it pretty much. So. That's the text. So now we're gonna add some dodge and burn to these just to make them look a bit more better. So a new layer above this Gabriel Jesus. Go to edit, fill, 50% gray, and then change this to overlay. And what I'm gonna do is go to my dodge and burn tool up here. So burn first, do the shadows first. Burn is for shadows, uh, dodge is for highlights. So as you can see, this will make it darker um, and it'll just make it look a lot a lot better really uh, once you actually add the camera or filter so obviously in the dark areas go over it and then the light areas you can go over it as well but in general this is just a nice little technique that you guys can learn and something that will just make your designs look better really so let's do that uh, i'm not going to do too much of it because it'll just take too long but obviously go into every little every little detail of your um design because it'll only make it look better in the long run it'll just make everything look a lot more defined and textured so let's do that here we go lovely now the main bit you want to do this on guys is probably going to be the dark shadows as well because you want to really intensify those ones um, because you know they're already there so making them darker makes sense instead of creating your own shadows um, so when I add these in it'll always make more sense. So there we go around his eyes just like dark bits like this see they already intensify once you go over them so it just makes more sense to do them. So in his hand here you can do some something like that but that, that's pretty good for now. So if I go and turn this off and on, there you go, you can see the difference it makes. And then we're gonna go to a dodge tool, but this is just gonna be on the highlights, guys. You don't need to do this on anywhere else. So if I just go and do this like this on his highlighted areas, it'll just make all of his arm look a lot better, his face look better. It'll just make a lot of things look a lot better um, once you actually add the camera filter. So it, this won't make much of a difference until you do add the camera filter, but make sure you do do it because once you do, you know, you won't go back because it'll make everything look better. 
and make sure you do it on the correct areas. Don't do it on, don't do highlights on the shadowed areas and, you know, vice versa, because that just won't make sense, will it? Just make sure you do it on the right areas of the uh, image. So something like that, if I turn this on and off now, there you go, you can see it's made a huge difference. Uh, for the front image, I will probably do it, but you don't have to do it for the smaller ones too much because, you know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can't see it as well once you actually do add the camera or filter, but for this, for the sake of the video, I will go over and quickly do it. Uh, so like the shadows, like here, like here, down here. Now, obviously if I was doing this for like a client or something, I would be taking my time with this, but because I'm just doing it for a YouTube video and just doing it to show you the actual technique, don't worry, too, I'm not gonna worry too much about it. So basically guys, what I'm trying to say is if you're doing this for somebody, take your time. If not, if you're just doing it for a bit of fun, you can do it quickly or you can do it really slowly and practice. Uh, if you need to so something like that that's nice there we go okay and then we're gonna add some highlights to him now you can sort of follow the highlights that are already there that makes more sense to be honest now I'm probably shaking my whole desk doing this so if the camera is shaking guys I'm sorry I'm sort of using my hand to um, use obviously use them my uh, the mouse and drag it across so it might look a little bit dodgy on the camera uh, but for now that that's good enough so if I turn that on and off, there we go, you can see the difference it's made. So guys, pretty much that is all you need to do for the match day poster. Now you can add textures, you can add other things like light effects and stuff, but this really is just a simple, simple design. So you don't really need to do too much to it. I don't think you need to do a lot to it anyway. Um, what I've done here is very simple. Now you could add a foot shadow for this uh, Gabriel Jesus here, but I sort of left it floating as he was cutting into the bottom of the page. So I thought that was good enough. Um, but obviously this is your personal design so you can do what you want with it. Now the only thing I would add is camera or filter at the end, obviously, like I do on everything. Um, but this time I'm not going to do it as harsh. So if I do do a camera or filter, what I'm going to do is make, it, make a screenshot. So Command Shift Option E or Control Shift Option E for Windows. Convert that to a smart object. Now you got your screenshot. So now we're going to go into camera or filter and we are going to basically make this a lot more saturated and a lot more fun to look at. So let's go and have a look at this. So contrast, you want to boost to about 10. Highlights, you can reduce down a little bit. Shadows, bring them up, a, bring them down a little bit, I would say, uh, to about minus five. Whites, you can bring up. And then blacks, you can probably darken as well. Texture, you don't need to go too harsh on this anymore. Clarity, boost that up to about eight. Dehaze as well. And now we're going to go for a saturation boost. So this is going to be probably about 15. 14 and then vibrance of five so now as you can see already it's looking a lot like you know a lot more fun to look at so this is what we're going for so we can boost the curve layer just to make it a lot brighter like that so just a simple bend and then sharpening you want to go up to about 16 noise reduction about 12 and then same with color so already if I do a side by side you can already see this is just looking way better color mixer you can change your blues if you want make them a little bit brighter again it doesn't really matter too much uh, the green for the pitch has already changed here so that looks good um, the main thing you want to focus on is not losing your text really because sometimes in the camera filter you can change it too much and you'll lose the sort of text color so it'll look a bit funny and uh, faded out so don't worry too much about that but just keep an eye on it grain you can add about 15 and then a vignette you can probably add a little one just to make it focus on the uh, corners of the stadium and stuff and then calibration just boosts the saturation of blues to about 10 and that's that's pretty much it guys so if i click ok now you can see the uh the difference we've had so it basically just makes it look a lot more saturated a lot more boosted brings out the shadows and highlights and just makes it look really fun to look at now this is something i made in probably about 17 minutes so i could have done it quicker but i know it's really simple and a short video for you guys but i think this is really valuable because it means you will be able to make a match day poster just as quick as me um it's very simple very fun to make and yeah i've enjoyed making it so hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video if you have leave a like and obviously let me know in the comments what you want to see more of because I do read every comment and I do reply to every comment. I love reading you guys comments but obviously uh, if you don't put any I can't reply to them. So enjoy the video, um, watch some more of the other videos, match days and then how I find images and yeah I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching guys, see you later.